Good morning, everybody. I thank the organizers for inviting me to speak on this topic, ischemia trial take home message for the interventionalists. My name is Sripal Bangalore. I'm an interventional cardiologist at NYU School of Medicine. These are some of my uh, disclosures. Um, uh, I have grant support from NHLBI for the ischemia and the ischemia CKD trials. So let's uh, dive right into the trial design. Uh, ischemia trial enrolled patients with moderate or severe ischemia as determined by the site. And patients are randomized after undergoing a coronary CT to either an invasive strategy of uh, cath and optimal revascularization or a conservative strategy of uh, OMT alone. So um, in terms of the eligibility criteria, it's uh, important to recognize what were the patients who were not enrolled in the trial. So we did not enroll patients who had ACS within two months, those who had heart failure, EF less than 35%, or NYHA class uh, three or four heart failure, uh, those, who had, those who were very symptomatic, who had unacceptable angina despite medical therapy or ACS within two months. The inclusion criteria was uh, patient needed to have moderate or severe ischemia and the definition of those are listed on the slide. And uh, there were CCTA eligibility criteria as shown on the slide. I want to uh, highlight some key uh, baseline characteristics of these patients. So we randomized 5179 patients, which is more than that of Courage and Barry 2D combined together. Patients were followed up for a, mean, a median of 3.2 years. Over half of the randomized patient had severe ischemia. So 54% had severe ischemia. In terms of coronary anatomy as defined by CCTA, multivessel coronary artery disease was seen in 77% um, of patients. The majority of them had left anterior descending artery involvement. In, in fact, proxylady stenosis was seen in nearly 50% of uh, randomized participants. In terms of the baseline health status of these patients, um, a third of the patient, randomized patients did not have any angina, 20% uh, had daily or weekly angina, and 44% had angina several times per month. In patients who were randomized to invasive strategy, 80% underwent uh, revascularization, 74% with PCI and 26% by, by cabbage. And in patients who were randomized to conservative strategy, it's also important to recognize that at four years, 16% of the patient randomized to conservative strategy underwent revascularization. And this number is considerably lower than that of Courage or Barry 2D. So in terms of primary outcome, it was a composite cardiovascular event. And as you can see on the slide, no difference between invasive and conservative strategy for this endpoint. But of course, the the curves cross at around the two-year um, mark, uh, such that there was initial upfront hazard and late benefit in invasive and compared to conservative strategy. So if you look at the more uh, robust endpoints, CV death MI, the results are similar, no difference, and the curves cross at around two-year time point. So now if you step back and ask ourselves the question, why do we revascularize patients who have stable ischemic heart disease? Some of the objectives are to improve survival, to prevent other cardiovascular events, and to uh, improve quality of life. So what is the data uh, to support revascularization to improve survival? If you look at contemporary revascularization versus medical therapy, stable ischemic heart disease uh, trial, one consistent signal has been no difference in mortality, whether it's the COURAGE trial, barry 2 d trial, FAME2 trial, and now the ischemia and the ischemia CKD trial. With the ischemia trial, although we talked about uh, crossing curves for the endpoint of mortality, you see that the two curves are superimposed, no difference in mortality. Recently, we published this meta-analysis of 14 randomized trials and 65,000 patient years of follow-up, uh, uh, looking at revascularization versus medical therapy. And I, I, as you see on this slide, the point estimate is right on the line of unity, no difference in survival between revascularization versus initial medical therapy. However, if you look at the guidelines, the guidelines continue to recommend revascularization to improve survival for certain high-risk group of patients. And the usual high-risk group of patients tends to be left main disease, LV dysfunction, triple vessel disease, proxylad disease, or those with extensive ischemia. So what is the data to support revascularization to improve survival in left main disease? There is some data, data based of uh, three randomized trials done in the 80s where there was hardly any medical therapy but cabbage was associated with significant mortality benefit in the left main subgroup. Of note, this was based off of only 150 patients who were randomized in those trials. In the, for the LV the, the dysfunction subgroup, the STITCHES trial 
shows that cabbage was associated with significant mortality benefit when compared to medical therapy with a number needed to treat of only 14. However, if you look at uh, triple vessel disease, trial back in the day suggests cabbage reduces um, mortality uh, for triple vessel disease, but more recent trials such as the Barry 2D trial shows the same cabbage, no difference in mortality when compared to medical therapy in multivessel diabetic uh, group of patients. In the ischemia trial, we presented this results earlier at ACC. No difference uh, between invasive and conservative strategy for mortality for those with triple vessel disease. The same was also true for patients with proximal LAD disease, and no difference in survival. And this was also true in the subgroup of patients who had severe uh, ischemia, no difference in survival between invasive and conservative strategy. Now, if you move beyond the endpoint of uh, mortality, uh, what we showed in ischemia was revascularization was associated with uh, increase in procedural MI, but a significant decrease in spontaneous MI. And this signal for reduction in spontaneous MI is also seen in other trials. And in the recent meta-analysis, we showed a 24% reduction in a spontaneous MI with revascularization when compared to medical therapy alone. And the same meta-analysis also shows that revascularization was associated with the increase in procedural MI, decrease in unstable angina, no difference in other endpoints. What about quality of life? In the ischemia trial, we showed that a revascularization, when in invasive strategy, when compared to conservative strategy, was associated with significant benefit for quality of life. Uh, and this benefit was actually durable because if you look at Courage and Barry 2D, the benefit was seen up front, but beyond two to three years of follow up, the curves actually uh, um, showed no difference, um, even for a quality of life. But in ischemia, we see a sustained uh, benefit of quality of life for up to four years of uh, follow up. But what we showed in ischemia was that this probability of being angina free really depends on baseline angina frequency. So if you have a patient with daily or weekly angina, uh, invasive strategy significantly increases the probability of no angina, such that you only need to treat uh, three patients to derive significant benefit of uh, invasive strategy. But if the patient is asymptomatic, there is no difference um, um, between invasive and conservative strategy. So what is the take home message for the interventionalists? So if you're revascularizing patients with stable ischemic heart disease, the only subgroup of patients that has some data to support survival benefit are those with left main disease and LV dysfunction. Unfortunately, we do not have data to support survival benefit from revascularization in stable ischemic heart disease for the other cohorts, such as uh, triple vessel disease, proxylated disease, or extensive ischemia. The other reasons to consider revascularization in this group of patients are to reduce angina, to reduce spontaneous MI, and to reduce unstable angina. And these um, relationships should be taken into consideration in order to uh, provide an appropriate risk balance of when you discuss uh, revascularization option for patients with stable ischemic heart disease. Thank you. For